Gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you. So this is what change looks like. If he were here, Mr. Speaker, in this time of momentous national distress, I would remind the President of the United States that he is not the leader of a party or an ideology. He is the leader of our country, one founded not to emulate others, but to inspire the world. As families lose their jobs, their homes, and their dreams for their children, as our troops fight and sacrifice in foreign fields for our liberty and security, President Obama's obsessive compulsive pursuit of an abominable government takeover of health care has defied the public's objections, despoiled this, the people's house, and further alienated Americans from their representative government. As President Obama's campaign mantra of hope and change has degenerated into tax and hate, reputable surveys prior to this vote report, the public overwhelmingly thinks that the U.S. government is broken. Only 21 percent of the public thinks it is being governed with its consent. Only 26 percent of the public trusts the federal government most of the time or always. Fifty-six percent of Americans think the federal government has become so large and powerful that it poses an immediate threat to the rights and freedom of ordinary citizens. Seventy percent believe the government and big business typically work together in ways that hurt consumers and investors. And 71 percent of Americans think the federal government is a special interest. In the wake of this health care debate's despicable dysfunctional process and product, it is clear the most dangerous special interest is big government and President Obama is its lobbyist. In contrast to Americans' faith in themselves, every major piece of legislation proffered by the President and his Democratic Congress expands and empowers big government at the expense of the people. Possessed of a smug, cynical, patronizing view of Americans as dependents desiring state benefits, this arrogant administration and its enablers have defied the American people and bipartisan opposition in Congress to unilaterally jam through a trillion dollar government takeover of health care. Why? For so many Americans, the answer is that this President and his Democratic Congress think they are smarter than you, want to run your life, and want to make government your ruler, not your servant. Such hubris threatens not only our health care system, it tears the social fabric and political contract of our nation. Instead of working for a more perfect union, the President's ideological obstinacy exacerbated the disorder and divisions within our nation and wrought a crisis of consent one that puts America's exceptional experiment in human freedom and self-government on the precipice of implosion. To do so, the President has the power, but not the right. Thus, he has merely scored a pyrrhic victory over the American people. Ultimately, his government-run medicine scheme will be repealed and replaced with free market patient-centered wellness because America's strength and salvation remains her free people, not a person. And this November, America's sovereign citizens will remind the President and his Democratic Congress that we, the people, do not work for government. The government works for us. No, the President and his Democratic Congress will not break us beneath big government. Devoted to our freedom and a more perfect union, we will keep the faith, trust the public, calm the times, and heal our country. I yield back.